Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Chapter 93-97 After my attack, I learned very quickly that I needed to know how to defend myself. I just learned it a little too late. Clive trains me, and he is very serious about it. I know how to take care of myself now, and I already know that my wolf, Lena, is bigger and much more aggressive than Eloise's wolf. Lena will not allow her to hurt our pups. We may not be happy about being a breeder, but every single one of those pups matters to us. I will not hesitate to go to Erin and throw her under the bus. Trevor and the other children are off limits to her. I do not care if he has to assign a warrior to go with the nanny everywhere they go. I wouldn't put it past her to try to set any of my babies up, but especially Trevor, and Colette. We have a great lunch, and my parents seem to get more and more relaxed around my children with each visit. Mom is very happy about all the grand pups, as these are all she will have. Raven will never let Mom near her pups. I still hear about Raven, and how well she is treated, and it pisses me off. To tell the truth, I can let the Brandon thing go, but Justin was mine. He may have been her mate, but none of us knew it at the time. He slept with me first, well, after a little additional encouragement. But I had to do it. He was waiting for his mate, and I couldn't wait for that. He would have been back in the pack and he would have gone with anyone to whom he was mated, and I couldn't have that. I wanted him, he would have been a strong alpha. Plus, and this was the most important, he was very good in bed, right from the start. I am not embarrassed about it, he was the best I ever had. I hate losing him, it is not fair that even after she rejected him, he still got her back. I will never let him go. If life was perfect it would be me, Justin, and Clive for the rest of my life. I see no reason why the goddess gave both him and Brandon to Raven. I wish sometimes that I could kill her, but I cannot leave the pack land. Aaron refuses to let me go. Maybe at the ten-year point, maybe then he will allow me to leave, although I doubt it. He likes having me here, despite how bad it makes me feel. I would love to leave, and I think once the children are older, I should be okay. I can go live in the human world, or see about getting my family to agree to move away from here. Change our names, move far away, whatever it takes to be safe. Having Clive makes me feel safe, and protected. He is the only reason that I didn't completely lose it before. I am barely hanging on right now and I can feel it. I will never recover from another incident. They have beaten me down, emotionally, and mentally, but not physically. They had not hurt me physically since the incident. Even with that said, I know that I am just a shell of my former self. I kissed both my parents goodbye and watched them drive away. I hold the sob in, as it won't do any good, and it will just upset Clive. He dotes on me, and I wished for the one thousandth time that he was my actual mate. My true mate, who could demand that I be treated with respect. To have kept me from being subjected to what I had been all these years. To not have had to go through so much. It is hard to acknowledge that at only twenty-three years old, I am ruined. Scarred, and disregarded, by all but a few. Attacked by she-wolves that hated me for not choosing death, when I never knew what the alternative to death was going to be. They planned that out perfectly, they knew at eighteen I would never voluntarily choose death, but I have died one hundred s of times since then. I hate my life. I hate how torn down I have become. I really hate the fact that Raven is living the life that I wanted. But I hate that most of all. I know that no matter how many times I blamed it on Raven, it was my own stupid decisions that got me here. 
Chapter 93 Reagan's POV We got the children bathed, put them to bed, and went into our room. Clive can tell that this pup is his. He swears by it, as he swears it has his scent, and he rubs my lower back because it hurts tonight. I am close to giving birth, and by now I am an expert at it. I take his scent in, and it gives me peace. I snuggle back into him and he puts his arm around me for us to sleep. This was a stressful day, as it always is. My parents always get so emotional at seeing me these days. I am praying for a nice night of sleep, but for some reason, the nightmare returns. It is so vivid, it is like I am there again. Flash back to five years ago. I have been here for a week here at Blood Tracker. I have managed to stay away from Michael all week. Clive is training me, and I also help him with the work in the garden. Clive likes to keep me with him, and I know that he worries about me. Clive stays with me all the time now, as he can tell Michael is angry. Aaron had agreed that if he hurt me, he was not going to get another chance with me. I felt that was fair, plus his girlfriend Jennifer hates me and so does Aaron's ex-girlfriend Tabitha. They keep offering to help train me, but Clive doesn't even pay attention to them. He knows them and suspects what they are up to. My panicked look was enough for him to know that I thought that I was going to get hurt by them too. He needed to grab a few things at his house on the way back today so I waited in his little living room while he collected them. I had gotten up and was looking at Clive's pictures when I felt a hand circle around my waist. I was pulled back into a hard chest, and the hand that had been on my waist was now on my BT. I knew it wasn't Clive as he had not come down the stairs yet from packing some more clothes up. I could tell from his scent, that it was Michael, and I was trying to not make any sudden movements to piss him off. I felt him kiss my neck, and I shuddered not in pleasure, but in disgust. Michael is a PT, and he is always watching me now. I am so thankful that Clive stays with me every night unless Aaron asks me to his chambers to sleep with him. But Aaron is always good about letting me come right back to Clive each night. Clive is my calmness in a storm, he is my principal person here, my number one, and I need him. He sleeps in my room with me and I think that it would have been so much worse without him here with me. I think that I would have been completely broken without being able to depend on him. Michael, please stop, I told him, and I raised my voice a little for Clive to hear me. He is taking a shower, little one. He can't hear you, so we have time. I got rid of Jennifer, so you can help to take care of me. I have missed you all week. It is your job to take care of me too, Reagan. Don't forget, you are supposed to bear my pups too Michael said as he started kissing my neck again. I feel sick, after what had happened the other day, Aaron told him that he had to wait for me to accept him. That he was not going to force me to sleep with Michael if I didn't want to. That was after Michael had told Jennifer what had happened in the office, to get her off his back. So he threw me under the bus. I was thankful that Aaron said it was my choice whether I did or not because I knew that he was going to try to force me now. I do not want to have S asterisk X with him, but he is right. I can hear the shower going upstairs, now that I am listening for it. Clive was really sweaty and probably figured that I was safe inside his home. I did too, I guess we were both wrong about it. I have only had a few trainings, and he is a Delta. There is no way for me to beat him, all I can do is stall until Clive comes. Clive can beat him, and he can tell Aaron what happened so I can get him permanently banned from being around me. It was like he wanted his crazy girlfriend to have a reason to attack me. He just wanted to have S asterisk X with me, and see how he could push Jennifer to attack. They have rules. She is not his mate, and pack members are not supposed to fight each other. But he is weak around her, 
he is scared of her, which makes me even more scared of her. How a strong, grown a asterisk s man can be scared of someone who is literally less than half his size. Michael, I am sorry. I do not want to have s asterisk x with you. You told Jennifer about it the last time, and they already hate me. I have an even bigger target on my back, and I just got done with training. I am sweaty and stinky. Please let me go, you holding me is making me even hotter than I was I told him in a calm tone. I am trying to get you hotter, honey, I want to get another taste of you, Michael said, trying to hit me with a bad line. I rolled my eyes at how stupid he really is and tried to pull away from him. He just tightened his grip and pulled me to the couch. He ignored my arguing with him, pulled my shirt off over my head, and opened the back of my bra, pulling it off to expose me to him. I said no, Michael, that is what it means. I refuse to sleep with you. Aaron said it was my choice. I will not do it. Go find Jennifer and get her to take care of you, because I won't be I told him, and he growled in anger at me. I could care less what you want, I am a ranked wolf, and Aaron has not told me that I cannot have s asterisk x with you. So, sorry, but this is going to happen, whether you want it or not Michael said and pulls his shirt up over his head. I darted to the door when his hands went to take his shirt off and managed to get the door open to escape, only for him to drag me back. The door slams from the force of me holding onto it for dear life. I can tell he is scared right now because we can both hear that the shower has stopped. He clamps his hand over my mouth before I can scream for Clive. I struggle against him, and as he drags me back to the couch, he is pinching one of my ns, very hard, and it hurts. He is still wearing his shorts, and I still have mine on too but he pulls mine down and goes to lay on top of me to hold me down while he tries to lower his shorts that are still in place. He is using on hand to push them down, and I bit him on his hand still covering my mouth when he glanced down to look at my body under him. He growled at me at the pain I caused him, and I screamed out for Clive. My head flew to the side from the blow I received from Michael. My face was really hot from where he hit me. He had slapped me very hard, and my ears were ringing from the blow. Thankfully, he was ripped up off of me, and thrown to the other side of the room. Clive was there, naked, still wet from his shower, and standing between me and Michael. I was just hoping that he was mind-linking Aaron because this was a really bad situation. They were pretty evenly mated size-wise and I was terrified that Michael might be able to beat Clive in a fight. He is not thinking clearly, as he wants to get his hands on me. I can feel the anger coming off of Clive in waves. He is pissed, and I can tell that he was willing to die trying to keep me safe. I try to calm down, and I cover my chest with my arm, as Michael was still staring at me. I quickly pulled my shorts back up and then grabbed my torn shirt to put on. I am just praying that Aaron or even Beta Darren shows up to help, or else I might be getting really hurt very soon. Michael growls a warning at Clive, and Clive ignores it. He growled back at Michael, even louder. Their wolves are about to come out. I am scared to death, and Clive motions me toward the stairs. I know that he is trying to get me to go lock myself in his room, but I don't want to leave him. Clive, you are hogging her. We are supposed to be sharing that choice piece of a asterisk s, but you are greedy. You get to be with her every night. I just want to have s asterisk x with her, I won't hurt her again. I just was a little excited last week Michael tries to excuse his behavior to Clive. No you will need to speak to Aaron. That was his choice to tell Reagan that she didn't have to sleep with you after you got her to be public enemy number one around here. You know how jealous Tabitha, and Jennifer are. 
they are out of their minds with anger now over the fact that we had slept with her. All because you couldn't take a little heat from your girlfriend. You are scared of someone less than half your size. You picked her, and we all know that Jennifer is not right in the head. That is on you. You will be leaving Reagan alone, from now on. You only have yourself to blame Clive told Michael, and Michael is frowning in displeasure. I will not be leaving her alone. I will be having s asterisk x with her again. You are not in control of her py, Clive. You just are getting some on the regular now, and think it has your name on it, well it doesn't. Last I checked, it had all four of our names on it. So let me buy, and you can even watch to make sure I don't hurt your precious little angel, but I will be fg her before I leave here today Michael yelled at Clive, and I started to back slowly up the stairs. Michael was becoming unhinged, his grasp of reality was slipping, maybe that was the real reason that he picked the girl he did. They both were off their beam by not accepting reality. No, I can assure you that you will not be sleeping with her, Michael, Clive said in a confident tone. Okay, your funeral, Clive, Michael said as he started to phase into his large light grey wolf. Clive pushed him out the door as he called back to me to lock myself in his bedroom. Clive immediately went to phase after that, but he was a few seconds after Michael, and that did not help him out. Michael clawed Clive's back pretty deeply before he could phase. I could hear his howl of pain as I ran up the stairs to go lock myself into Clive's bedroom. Clive's wolf is a beautiful light tan color with white accents on his fur. I can see the fight going on outside, and I am thankful when I finally see Aaron, and Darren running this way to stop them. I stayed in the bedroom, watching as Aaron phased back from his large black wolf, into his human form. Darren also phased back to his human form, from his dark grey wolf. Clive and Michael had numerous injuries from the fight. They were both bleeding heavily, and panting to catch their breath. They are not quiet about the argument that ensued. I can see how badly Clive's back is hurt, and it is bleeding pretty bad right now. I go to look for a medical kit to be able to clean his wound before his wolf starts to heal it with the dirt inside of it. I head downstairs and looked outside before I exited. They are all standing there, naked as the day they were born, and didn't care about it at all. I started working on Clive's back as Aaron and Darren keep Michael away from me. I tied my shirt to make sure I was covered, as best I can. I can see that Michael's chest is heaving, and he is pissed off. As far as he and Clive are concerned, he feels that he was in the right. He wants to sleep with me, and Clive stopped him. I can hear his hateful words about me as he insists that he was within his rights to FK me. He wants Clive to be in trouble for preventing him from getting to me. No, actually after what you did to her. You are not allowed to sleep with Reagan again, unless she says that it is okay to do so. You hurt her very much the last time, and for no reason. Then you put her in danger by getting Jennifer and Tabitha fired up against her and spreading all kinds of rumors around the pack. Judy was even upset at the time, as she didn't know the reason for Reagan being here. Judy is okay with it now, as both she and Darren want pups but you deliberately put her in danger Michael. You basically rd her and don't lie, we were all there, we saw you do it, all because you were mad. You can't just treat her like that. I was wrong for starting that ball rolling. But even though she is here to bear us strong pups, you can't just hurt her. You will have to wait for her to okay it, and she may even have one of us there to make sure that you don't hurt her again. Michael Aaron told him. Excuse me, but he doesn't want that worthless tramp. He is with me, and if he has a pup, it will be our pup together, not hers. I don't even know why she is still here, Aaron. Hasn't she caused enough problems already? 
I mean you loved Tabitha until this bh came here and took you away from her Jennifer said as she ran up and tried to hit me in the back as I was still tending to Clive. Look, she even hurt Clive, Aaron. Stop this now, and get rid of her. From what I heard, we could kill her ourselves, and no questions will be asked. So get rid of her. She is bad for you. She is bad for our pack. I hate looking at her nasty a asterisk s. She is just here to steal people's mates. She cannot be trusted, Aaron Tabitha said, and tried to grab Aaron's arm. She is blatantly checking him out as he is still naked, and she is not trying to hide that fact from anyone. Tabitha, we were through before Reagan got here. You were just someone to help me knock the edge off sometimes. You were never going to be Luna here. I still want my true mate. But while I wait, Reagan will give me the strong pups that I need to take over the pack after I step down Aaron told her. I can help you too, Aaron. I would love to bear your pups. I am the strongest female fighter here. She has nothing on me. I can bear you the pups you want, just mark me as your chosen Tabitha said to Aaron. She was begging, and a group was gathering around us. None of them were trying to be quiet about what was going on at all. There were several she-wolves taking in the enjoyable view, and I hate to say it, but they were all indeed built very well. They all had the deep V-cuts that made you drool just a little over them, but Darren, Aaron, and Clive all had an eight-pack, and not too shabby where it counts. Michael was buffer than they were in his chest and had a clear six-pack, but he didn't work out the same as them. It was clear he dicked around when it came to training. He did the bare minimum, and that was it. I stayed behind Clive after I got him cleaned, treated, and his wound wrapped. He smiled in appreciation at me and then hugged me as he knew how upset I was. I was calming down when I heard Jennifer's screeching voice rise up into the air. What? No, that is not the truth Aaron. Michael doesn't want her nasty a asterisk s. He was coming to visit Clive. She must have come on to him, not vice versa. I refuse to believe it Jennifer said and gave me a venomous look. She would love nothing more than to try to kill me right now in front of them. She and Tabitha both were giving me a hard stare, and I didn't like it. They had threatened me that night on my first day here. I already know that they would love nothing more than for me to disappear, forever. She took her t-shirt, and bra off in front of me, Aaron. She was trying to seduce me, I couldn't resist the temptation. I was going to sleep with her. Then Clive showed up all of a sudden and then she started to play the victim Michael said, and I was shocked at what he said. That was nothing like what happened, but Jennifer and Tabitha believed it the moment he spoke the words. See, she is causing problems in your own unit. She is not worth discord in your ranked wolves. Get rid of her Aaron, before she causes even bigger problems in the pack. Problems that you might not be able to solve. She is a danger to us, just being here. Take her back, or kill her, either way, she has to go. I will not stand by and allow her to drag you guys down with her. She is a slut. I cannot see how she could bear any of you strong pups. I will never believe it. I refuse to fall victim to her lies Tabitha said. Stay away from my man, Jennifer said to me as she tried to hit me from behind again. She had just run up on me, and thankfully Clive caught her by the waist. I don't want your man. I refuse to let him touch me ever again, and Aaron said that is my right to do so. I will bear the rest of them pups, as I have to, but I swear to the goddess that none of my pups will be from Michael I told her and she shrieked as she tried to break free to try to attack me again. You dare call him Aaron? You are not allowed Tabitha said as she tried to attack me too. 
Aaron knew what she was going to do and stepped forward to grab her hand to keep her from attacking me right there. I told her she could, after all, she will be the mother of several of my pups, Aaron told her with a smirk. I can feel Tabitha's rage increase to an even higher level. She is so angry right now, she is like a volcano ready to explode. I have no idea why she was this pissed off. He broke it off with her, and she was never in the running for Luna anyway. I will deal with you. Mark my words. You will always remember me Tabitha tells me. I avoid looking at her, as she is clearly unhinged. I had no idea at that moment how right Tabitha was with what she said. Chapter 94 Reagan's POV I wake up in a cold sweat, and I can feel the baby moving around a lot right now. He must be able to feel my stress from the nightmare. My heart is racing, and I know that I woke up to keep from remembering the rest of what happened that fateful day. Clive lay next to me, with his even breathing letting me know that he is still asleep. His arm is still across me, as he tries to protect me, even in my sleep. I went and got myself a glass of water, and used the bathroom before heading back to bed. Sleep did not come very quickly for me. I fought against it for a long time. I already knew that the rest of the dream was coming, and I just didn't want to deal with it right now. It took me an hour to fall asleep again, and sure enough, the rest of the nightmare came back to play out in front of my eyes. Flashback to five years ago Clive stayed with me for the rest of the day after the incident with Michael. We had lunch, and then went out to work in the garden. I worked my anger out at what Michael attempted to do to me, by pulling the weeds up aggressively. I have learned a lot this week. Clive knows a lot of information, about numerous subjects. I also found out that Michael didn't like me because his best friends were Garrett and Mark back at Black Moon. He listened to them like their word was gospel when they spoke about me. They had never given me even the slightest chance there at Black Moon. Did I mess up? Yes I did. But I swear to the goddess if I had even had an inkling of what would happen with my drugging Blake to let his guard down was going to cost me. I would have never done it. I would have kept my head down, and just kept working on Travis. He liked me, I just wanted some security. A safety net by doing it, so I could have some pull at the pack too. I will tell you now that other than not killing Raven when I had the chance, it was the biggest mistake of my life. Clive and I went back to our room and took a shower together. It was nice and his affection for me grows with each passing day. I could see myself happy with him for the rest of my life. He cares about me, and he shows it. I realize that I didn't deserve it, but I am so thankful for it. We head downstairs for dinner and we dressed up tonight for it, kind of like a date. I had worn a button-down satin shirt in baby blue, and a black pencil skirt that stopped a few inches above my knees. Everything but my legs was completely covered tonight, and I felt classy and beautiful right now on Clive's arm. I paused when we entered the dining room because I see that Tabitha was sitting with Jennifer at the end of the table. They saw me the moment I entered the room too. Michael's eyes were on me, and they schemed over my body more than once. Showing me with his expression that he remembered what I looked like naked, and my stomach turned at the thought of it. Too bad for him, that was a one-time thing, and he no longer gets the pleasure of my company. Aaron stands and pulls my chair out for me. I will be sitting at his left, with Clive right next to me. Darren and Judy are across the table from us, with Darren at Aaron's right hand, and Judy directly across from Clive. Michael is thankfully sitting next to Clive so I feel safer than I would with him across the table and looking at me. Clive is very attentive to me and he started to make me a plate from the food at the table. He knew what I wanted without me having to ask for it, and I was impressed. I have only been here a week, so he has been paying attention to what I liked and didn't like to eat this whole time. 
I see one of the Omegas come out with a salad for me too, and I knew that he had set that up as well. You are spoiling her. This is supposed to be a punishment here, one I will remind you that she earned Michael said to Clive. Do I tell you what to do about your girlfriend? You can just pay attention to her, and not Reagan. You have lost your chance with her, especially after the stunt you pulled this afternoon. Jennifer may believe your lies, but I don't. We all do, well, except for Jennifer and Tabitha. They still believe your lies, but I think it is more because they want to believe bad about Reagan, than actually believing you, Michael Clive told him, and I can feel the mood change at the table. Wait, let me guess. She is a pure delicate flower? Right, Clive. Or let me guess she was set up and doesn't deserve the punishment that she has received from Black Moon. She basically R.D. Blake. She should have been put to death. I don't feel sorry for her at all. If the other punishment was death, then only an IT would think that the other option would be a good one. You don't get a trip to Disneyland as a punishment. She earned what she is getting, she deserved it, I wish she had decided to be a good person and accept the consequences of what she has done. She has gotten away with murder, and you know as well as we do, that everyone here has seen the show she put on, to set her own sister up. What won't she do to get ahead? She is disgusting, and I cannot believe that you guys are all thinking she hung the moon. She didn't. She thinks way too highly of herself, and someone really needs to take her down a peg or two. Hard to feel sorry for her, when she only has herself to blame Tabitha announced to the table, and she didn't lower her voice. It was embarrassing as what she said was true. But I never came here to take anyone's boyfriend away from them. I had nothing to do with that. That was between Aaron and her, not me. Just like she just freely admitted, I am being punished. What happened to me when I got here, was not a pleasant experience, I didn't consent to it, I was forced to do it. But I cannot open my mouth to say it. It will not help anything, it will only cause extra problems. It will insult Aaron and Clive, and I cannot lose Clive or his support for me, I just can't take the risk. This is my life now and I cannot afford to insult and argue with others like I used to. You just said yourself that she is being punished. She is being punished, especially with what Michael did to her. That is why he lost his privilege. She didn't choose this punishment, but I for one am very happy just thinking about the beautiful and strong pups that this goddess is going to give me. I think that all you're underhanded, and manipulative actions just came back and bit you in the a asterisk s Tabitha. You are the reason that you are not with Aaron anymore. Reagan will not be Luna, and she didn't do anything to you personally. She doesn't have any blame assigned to her in this, you are just pissed off at losing the lunch ticket that you thought you had. You were never going to be Luna. Everyone here at the table knew that too, including Michael. Aaron is waiting for his mate. When he finds her, then we will have our Luna, but be serious. It was never going to be you. Don't act like you didn't know that. I have heard Aaron tell you 100 times that you are just there for when he needs a release. You were never, ever, going to be Luna here Clive told Tabitha and her gasp of surprise at him telling her that seemed genuine. She was honestly shocked. She either got it in her head herself that she would be Luna, or Aaron had implied it at one time or another. Even if he had done it in jest, she would still think that she had a chance to become the next Luna. I glanced over at Aaron, but his face doesn't have any guilt on it at all. He is looking at her like he expects an answer as to why she would have even thought about her becoming the next Luna. But you chose me, Aaron you chose me to be your girlfriend. The next logical step was for me to become your Luna. That is how it works. Your own cousin took a chosen she-wolf as his mate. 
They are happy, Blake loves her. Why would you choose me to be your girlfriend, and lead me on, if you never had any intention of allowing me to become the Luna? I can hear the pain in her voice as she speaks. I would feel sorry for her, but she assumed things that she was never promised. Aaron mentioned from day one how much he was looking forward to finding his mate. I know she has feelings for him, but it seems like she would rather be Luna, to get respect from the pack, not for her love for Aaron. Wait a minute Tabitha. I never promised you that you would be Luna. You are well aware that I was, and still am, looking for my mate. We are compatible for hookups, but you are not a nurturer. You don't care for the betterment of the pack, you only care about rank. You have been going around for the last year bragging about becoming the Luna. I heard about it, I just didn't stop you as you had never mentioned it to me. I was fine back then with how things were, but don't act like the victim here. You were fully aware that my goal has been, and always will be to find my true mate Aaron told Tabitha. She is furious and since she can't attack Aaron with her words, she comes straight for me. We were just fine until she got her and put her hooks into you. She doesn't deserve to carry your pup. It should be me. I have been here. I am the one who truly cares for you. For goddess's sake, she has only known you a week. She was all over you from the start. She cannot be trusted, did you learn nothing from what Blake said to you? He warned you not to trust her at all. Michael told us what all happened. She doesn't deserve to live, let alone provide pups for you, and the ranked wolves. That is a good thing to do, you are all attractive, so why would that be a punishment? Tabitha asked. Blake clearly wanted me to suffer the humiliation of what my new role was. To have no one to protect me from these four men. I would be willing to bet that Blake even got Garrett and Mark to tell Michael to give me a hard time about it. I would bet money I don't have on that being the truth. Michael's need to punish me almost overweighs his desire for me. This is ramping up to come to a bad situation, and I unconsciously moved closer to Clive for protection. It did not go unnoticed, by the whole table. Michael got even madder and Aaron's lips narrowed at me giving the nod to Clive for my protection. But if anyone here in this pack was going to fight for me, it will be Clive. He showed that earlier today, he got hurt trying to protect me. Tabitha has no idea that I would trade places with her in a second. She can do this and become the breeder herself. The fact is that my choice has been taken away. I basically have no rights. No control over what happens to my own body and that in itself is a living nightmare. It has gotten better this week. It is not one after the other now. They have calmed down and it is usually one a night, minus Michael. I will never voluntarily sleep with him again. He has been a creeper from the first day. If Tabitha wants to do it, I say let her. But I kept my mouth shut. I know that the guys do not want her at all, or they would have tried to get with her. It is me that they are after, not her. From the way it sounded, if Aaron made her Luna, she would have no problem at all being willing to help populate the pack. There is no need for you to hate on Reagan, she didn't get her hooks in me. You already know that she will not be made Luna either. Although I have to say that she would be far more qualified for the position than you are, as an alpha-born she-wolf. She didn't sign up for this. I saw her face when he told her what was going to happen, she didn't know, and neither did her family. That was the punishment that Blake and Cheryl decided on. She is here simply to create a stronger pack for us, and help make Blood Tracker prosper. She has connections that will be able to help us increase our land, and allow us to be able to accept more people into our pack. You know what my goal is Tabitha, and she can help us attain it Aaron told everyone at the table. Instead of hearing what he had said to her, 
she just focuses her angry gaze on me. You all need to leave Reagan alone. I have promised her father that I would protect her, and I will. You are getting mad for something that you knew was coming, Tabitha. I have told you several times that the second I find my mate, we were done. You were the one who insisted that it was Reagan, or you, in my office that day. You made me make the choice, even after I explained it all clearly to you. I paid for her to be here. I know that you can feel her strength. You know that she is alpha-born. You have nothing to be mad at her about. You could have accepted it, the fact that I was going to be with you, and have her carry my pups but instead, you wanted to do a power play. That is all on you, it was your choice to put out the ultimatum, and it was my choice to accept it. You're forcing the issue broke us up, not me, and not Reagan. No matter how you try to change what happened between us, your unwillingness to listen to reason is the reason we are no longer together. I would have accepted our relationship until I found my mate. But we are done now. The way you have acted this whole week makes me wonder if I ever knew you at all. I guess you were playing fake this whole time to get me to take you as my chosen mate Aaron told Tabitha. But I love you, Aaron. I would do anything for you Tabitha said in a low tone. I guess she didn't want the whole room to hear her this time. You do not love me, Tabitha, no you don't. I have caught you in numerous lies, and situations throughout the years. You don't do things like that if you really loved someone. Plus, if you were really willing to do anything to be with me, you wouldn't have had this showdown over Reagan. You would be running all over the pack trying to get everyone against her. You wouldn't have done half the things you have if you did love me. We are done now, and Reagan will make handsome pups for all of us ranked wolves. Our children will be strong, and fierce fighters. That is what we need to have here, strong ranked wolves to take this pack higher than I could have even imagined. I will not discuss this again. This is the third and last time that I want to hear you bring this up. As much as you want to pin our breakup on Reagan, it isn't her fault. It is yours, and only yours. You and Jennifer need to settle down and leave her alone. This is your last warning. There will be a harsh punishment dealt out to you for another infraction by either of you. I have been more than lenient with you both, but that is over right now. Either you stop, or I will stop you Aaron told them and his tone was cold and scary. I was scared, and he wasn't even speaking to me. Her anger is palpable and so is her friend Jennifer's. Her righteous indignation at her friend being slighted by the Alpha is apparently on me too. Their stairs are full of malice, and I am glad that Clive stays with me in my room, and that Aaron is close by. These girls are blaming me for things that are completely out of my control, and they didn't care that Aaron told them to stop. My dad was willing to help because he wants me to be kept safe. That was the deal, my safety gets Aaron the pack that he had always dreamed of. It was a win-slash-win for both of us. Dad is wanting me to be as taken care of as I can be in this situation. As Aaron refused to allow him and Mom to come here and build on his pack lands. Blake wants all the benefits of having my dad and his money available to him. I am quite sure that he knew Dad was going to be very serious about trying to protect me here, and Aaron didn't want the headache of that. They are less than 30 minutes away from here. They are allowed to come here after the three-month mark. Blake was the one to impose the time frame on them. He knew it was going to take a little while for them to get me pregnant, and that was what he wanted, me already pregnant when they can finally come to visit. I stopped eating because I could not swallow my food anymore. My throat was tight and I knew that this was not the end of them. They were going to come at me again, and when they started whispering to each other, I knew it was going to be bad. I knew they were up to something. I just didn't know what it was going to be, 
but I plan on sticking to Clive like there was no tomorrow from now on. I didn't care how stupid I looked doing it, I was going to make sure that I trained hard, even at my novice stage. I will either stay with either Clive or Aaron to keep me safe until I was able to protect myself because I know for a fact that neither of them was going to leave me alone after tonight. Chapter 95 Reagan's POV I was right, about them not letting it go. I just didn't realize that they would be coming for me just six hours later. Aaron had asked for me to come to his room. I was glad that up here on the Alpha's floor meant that Tabitha would never know about it. That thought was short-lived as Michael exited Aaron's room just as I was walking up to it. Aaron held the door wider for me to enter, and Michael looked like he had been slapped. The knowledge that not only was I going to Aaron, and with him in his room, but that Michael couldn't touch me anymore, and he was furious. Michael gave me a disgusted look and walked away from me mumbling. I didn't know why he was up here, he usually didn't come up to the alpha floor. That meant it was important, but I wasn't going to ask. Since it involved Michael I believe that I was in the clear, as I wanted no further dealings with him. Plus, I do not do pillow talk. Aaron really didn't want other females in his room. He had been reserving that right for his mate, but Clive stayed in my room with me. Despite what happened my first day here, that had not happened again. It was just one-on-one -on -one for the rest of the time, and that was a lot better for me. It was too much that day, and really just too much. It was downgraded to just the three of them now, and that was a lot better for me. I was staying in the Luna's suite and that made me able to sleep with Clive. It helped me just be able to have a restful sleep knowing that I was safe with him. I entered his room and he was in his lounge pants, and no shirt. He looked angry, but I was scared to ask him what was wrong. I figured it was pack business, and I was not authorized to know what was going on. I was okay with that. Aaron calmed down and soon took me to his bed. I had already showered, and he likes the vanilla-scented body wash I use. Aaron is much more gentle with me today than he has ever been. He is settling in on the fact that I will be staying with him, and that has made our time together much better. He kisses me and works me up until I am screaming his name before he is sliding into me. I have to admit I really enjoy sleeping with both Aaron and Clive. They seem to care about me enjoying this as much as they do, and that helps me get through it. Aaron holds me for a little while before he kisses me on top of my head and lets me get dressed to leave. He walks me to the door and watches me as I go back to my room. Now, that was weird. He has never done that before. I have been told numerous times that I am safe up here, but I could feel more eyes on me as I walked back to my room. I looked at the door at the top of the emergency stairs and the door quietly closes. I turned to look back at Aaron and he had noticed it too. He is looking at the door like he was trying to figure out who was there, and really it can only be a few people. I believe that he already knows who it was standing there. He looked over at me and said, Don't worry about it Reagan. I will be dealing with them all in the morning. What can I say back to him about it? Absolutely nothing. There was nothing to be said on my end, I have no pull or control over anything here. I nodded at him and put my thumb on the skin to go back into my room. I headed straight for the tub. After these visits with Darren and Aaron, I find that it is best to just go take a bath, and then a shower. I just feel better that way. I put another nightgown on, as the other one is dirty now, and get into bed with Clive. He immediately wraps me in his arms and pulls me into his body. Sometimes I want to sleep with him when go to bed, and sometimes I don't. He always lets me choose if I want to sleep with him or not. But I am tired, and honestly, a little stressed out. This has been a bad day and I would have liked to have gotten a pass on going to Aaron's room tonight, but he is the Alpha. 
I can't refuse him, I already know that for a fact. Clive falls asleep quickly and once my mind settles, I go to sleep too. I am not sleeping very deeply, so I heard when the door beeps noting that it has been opened. I can tell that Clive is still sleeping behind me. I moved to get him to start waking up. I know that with the lack of speaking by whoever is in the room, this is going to be a problem. I grab Clive's wrist and he starts to wake up, when I get yanked away from him and pulled out of the bed. The next second Clive is up and trying to come and help me when he gets punched in the side of his head. I know that he is disoriented from the blow as he staggers, and then falls to the floor. I go to scream, but a rag is stuffed into my mouth. I can see Tabitha and Jennifer grinning at me, and Michael coming from the other side of the bed to walk up to me. I start struggling more now. I started to try to link Aaron several times, but he is not responding to me. I tried to link Darren over and over again to wake him up, also with no response. I tried to link Judy for help, and I heard a slight reply back, but I am terrified that I am toast now. It is 2 a.m., of course, and they are all asleep. Michael grins evilly at me and yanks my nightgown off of me, and I am standing before the three of them in just my underwear. You think that you are so great, don't you, Reagan? I have no idea why you were allowed to go into Aaron's room when he has refused to let me in there after all these years. I am better than your slutty A**s any day of the week. You should be ashamed of yourself for breaking us up. I swear you have gotten me in trouble for the last time. I plan on getting my call done tonight. I tried to call to report you and Michael stopped me. I went to report your location to Alpha Cole Walker, at Blood Walker. I was stopped, but I am positive after we get done with you, we can just leave your dead body at Blood Walker's gates and have no issues with it. Aaron won't want you anymore once I get done with you Tabitha said and smirked at me. My heart rate shoots up as Michael comes behind me and grabs my arms so that I cannot defend myself against them. I started pleading through the link for Aaron, Darren and Judy to come to the room and stop them. Begging for help for me and Clive, but not getting a response from any of them. You deserve this bh Jennifer said as she leaned in towards me. She then started punching me in my ribs. I can feel some of them break on both sides, and the pain is tremendous. I can see that Tabitha is enjoying seeing me in pain. She starts encouraging Jennifer into increasing the power of her punches. My tears are flowing and I want to scream out for help, but the room is soundproofed, and I have the rag in my mouth. I manage to see Tabitha pulling out something from a bag and she tells Michael to turn me around. I can tell that he is happy about it. He had taken his shirt off, and now we are skin to skin, and he is taking full advantage of me pressed against him, and I can't wiggle away as I know I have at least three broken ribs right now. I feel like my back is on fire a moment later and I start to try to get away. Hold her still Michael. I need to make sure to no one will ever want this BH again. She should have chosen death, and now I am going to make her wish for it Tabitha spat with venom. Michael holds me still applying pressure to my ribs and I still, as I can tell if he squeezes much harder that I will have even more broken ribs as a result. I feel the burning on my legs, calves, and thighs. She then goes all over my back, neck, and my arms. Turn her around, Tabitha said to Michael, and she is breathing hard in her excitement. Her eyes looked crazy, and she is enjoying this way too much. I can see what is going on now. She has some kind of glove on, and she has sharp nails made of silver glinting in the moonlight coming in the window. She dips her hand back into the bag she is holding and the silver nails are dripping with whatever liquid it is. It burns me very badly as she starts making thin cuts on the front of me now. Starting with my chest, and my stomach, and then down to my legs. 
Jennifer is watching with an almost hypnotized gaze as Tabitha continues scarring my body. She is taking her time and making the cuts as deep as she possibly can, to try to make sure that they never heal. She is enjoying this, and I want to kill her more than I have ever wanted to kill anyone else in my life, and that includes Raven. Since Jennifer is watching me be carved up she is not watching Michael and I can tell the instant he realizes it. He starts kissing my neck, licking me, and sniffing deeply to take in my scent. He started cupping my BT in his hand, and for a short time, it wasn't noticed. I could feel him freeze the second he found out she was watching him. We both found out that she had noticed at the same time. Michael, what? She just slept with the Alpha. She is a slut, why are you touching her like that? You are mine Jennifer said as she stepped towards us. The moment she smelled his scent on me, she leaned in to get a better whiff of me and realized that he had been putting his mouth on me. Instead of her punishing him, she punched me in the face and started screaming at me. You can't stop yourself, can you? You are willing to try to steal everyone's man. I wish you were dead, slut. You have no redeeming qualities at all, you are completely disgusting and a waste of a she-wolf. Strong my a asterisk s, you are crying like a baby right now aren't you? I hope you get what you deserve. If they see you now, none of them will ever want you again. We have made sure of that. Now do her face, Tabitha, so no one will think that she is beautiful again Jennifer cackles as her crazy laughter fills the room. My eyes widen in shock, please not my face. I can always wear pants, and long sleeves to cover up what they did, but not if they ruin my face. Anyone that sees me will see the scarring. My wolf can't heal me, and my body feels like it is on fire. The liquid has to be wolf spain or another poison. The silver claws are also keeping my wolf, Lena, from being able to heal me. I started trying to link them again, and I am not getting a response. I am screaming for help through the link and then in desperation, I try to link Clive. Goddess, I hope that he is about to wake up. I struggle with Michael, not caring that my ribs are being broken. I have to protect my face. I do not want to look like a monster to everyone that I meet for the rest of my life. I bear the pain of getting the wash rag out of my mouth as I open my mouth even wider to dislodge it. I started to scream my lungs out for help. Soundproofing helps, but it doesn't drown out everything. There are still muffled sounds, like when we heard Aaron and Tabitha arguing in his office a week ago. I have to do something. I go to link Aaron again, and I heard a little bit of a response when I get knocked out of Michael's arms and onto the floor. I am facing down, but I am not safe. Both Jennifer and Tabitha are on me quickly, trying to flip me over on the floor to be able to scar my face up. Clive and Michael are in a battle against each other, and one of them will not be surviving it. It seems like they are fighting to the death. Thankfully, Jennifer turned her focus onto their fight and took two steps away from me, to go help Michael. I heard the door click for someone to enter and the roar that sounded in the room made everyone freeze for a second. Aaron entered the room, and it is chaos. Clive throws a punch at Michael who was still frozen in place in his guilt at being caught in my room. Clive's blow hits him right in the nose, knocking him out. Jennifer screamed out in fury and jumped on him to attack him for knocking Michael out. Even though she knew he had knocked Clive out after they entered the room. He threw her over his shoulder as she was scratching his back to shreds with her hands half phased into claws. What? Are you crazy? Clive screams at her as she screams at him for knocking Mikhail out, and tries to attack him again. Clive punched her in the stomach, and I hope one of her ribs got broken from the punch just like she had done mine. He knew what had happened. They broke into our room to knock him out and harm me 
and they have been successful at their goal. I see a flash of silver on my side and I felt the sting of the claw on my face. Since I saw that she was about to strike I moved away from her, but she still managed to catch some of my cheek. She was aiming for my eyes. Once she blinded me, she was going to probably scar the rest of my face up. Aaron ran over to knock Tabitha away from me, and she immediately turned and lunged back at me again. Aaron blocked her strike with his own arm to keep her from getting the claw on my face again. She ended up scratching him on the arm, and he growled at her. I know it burns, as she had dipped her hand in it again before she went to mark my face with claw marks. He reaches out and grabs her hand to stop her from attempting to hurt me again. What is going on in here? Have you all gone insane? Aaron yells out. He shakes her hand and the claw slid off her fingers and onto the floor. Her gloved hand still protected her from the liquid in the bag that she is holding. I see it the moment she goes to drop the bag. She already knew what was going to happen, and although happy to make me scarred and suffer, she was not willing to have the same thing done to her. Warriors arrived at the door, and he instructed them to take all three of them down to the cells. They were surprised that their gamma was being locked up too. I want two guards down there at the cell. Let them know that if any of these three get out, all the warriors on duty will be killed along with them when I hunt them down, Aaron said, and he is pissed. I just allowed my body to hit the floor and was glad that I had managed to survive this attack. My vision goes black as I heard Clive call out my name. I woke up in the pack hospital. My whole body was still burning, and it hurt to move. Glad to see that you're awake beauty I heard from my side and I saw Clive sitting next to me, reading a book. He looked pretty bad. He needs a shave, and I wonder how long I was out. You look confused. You have been out for over a week. You have four broken ribs, and Tabitha has scarred you up pretty bad, but I think you are still beautiful. They have been putting you in a bath to try to clean all the silver and wolf spain from your wounds, but her intent was obviously to hurt you as badly as she could. You need to heal up, the second you get released, is when Aaron will carry out their sentences. So you need to heal up. That bastard Michael deserves to die, and so do they Clive told me. I wanted them punished, and I wanted them all gone from around me but I don't need to see it. Aaron doesn't have to wait on me. He can carry it out whenever he wants to. Tabitha has done much more than scar me, I am scared now, and I keep having the nightmare of them attacking me. They should never have been able to get into our room like that I told him quietly. I agree, and I am sorry. I never in a hundred years would have thought that he was capable of doing that. I never even got a chance to defend myself, he was already next to me when I sat up and he punched me, knocking me out. We should have taken his approval for coming into our room out of the system. I am so sorry it happened beauty, but I think that you are still beautiful Clive told me, and I shook my head. He is wrong, he just feels bad, or guilty, that it happened on his watch. I still think that you are beautiful too I heard Aaron's voice coming from the doorway. You can carry out whatever punishment you are going to give them. I don't want to see them again. I am okay with missing out on whatever gets done to them I told him. Are you sure you want to miss it? I was planning on letting you give Tabitha the same scars she gave you Aaron said to me, and I finally turned to look at him. He was serious and I was thinking about it. She would hate that. I was hurting, but I have had a week of healing and although Lena could not fix the cuts and scars on me, she could however work on my ribs. They felt a lot better, I can move now and not cry from pain. Okay. I would actually like to do that I told him. They had me out of the hospital in an hour. I am really looking forward to this. Feeling that burning, making my skin crawl, hurt. 
it hurt pretty bad. And feeling it as the silver cut my skin and allowed that liquid to keep me from healing, made my wolf Lena whimper in remembering when it happened to us. I see them all at the training grounds and there were now three poles that are now set in the ground there. I see that they all have silver handcuffs on and their arms raised over their heads attached to the top of the pole. They knew that they were going to be put to death. Hopefully, Tabitha goes last so she can feel some of the burning and pain that she put me through. I can see her glaring at me when we walked up. I can see her gulp as Aaron hands me the same glove she used on me. I slide on the claws she had made up. I opened up the bag with the liquid in it and made sure that the claw was dropping before I stepped up to her. She tried to act like she wasn't scared, but she knew what she put me through. I looked at myself in the mirror. It could have been much, much worse. But even with all the treatment that they could do there, they were limited in being able to take my scars away. Thankfully Clive had taught me some defensive moves, that I was able to use and keep my face away from her. It caused my scar to not be deep on my face. With makeup on, I might be able to almost cover it, but these days, I just don't wear makeup like I used to. I see Jennifer sneer at me, defiant as she was sure I was just weak. I started with her, she helped hurt me, and she held me still for Tabitha to try to scar me up. Seems fair for her to get a little taste of this, as they thought it was good enough for me. I gave her a swipe on her waist and then her neck, with the way she is screaming, you would think it hurts. I see Tabitha see me coming towards her now. I am going to aim straight for her face, but she knew it and turned from me, so I just got her on her neck, and then her chest. They are wearing clothes, and that is keeping me from cutting them as badly as they were able to do to me. I see Clive come around and stand behind her and hold her head still for me. I got her cheek, and this time I dug deeper, just like she did on me. It won't take my scars away, but I did feel better getting them to know the same kind of pain I felt. Tabitha is screaming in pain and anger at me for getting to scar her up too. Aaron told the group collected around us, what had happened before he passed their sentence. Clive held the back of my shirt up to show them some of my scars. They gasped at how bad it looked. I have to admit that I didn't look at my body. I knew it was bad, I was mainly concerned for my face. Aaron announced to the pack all the charges being levied against them. He detailed everything and then he got to the items that the pack cared about the most. They had disobeyed their alpha, numerous times. He laid it all out there, as Jennifer, Tabitha, and Michael had family here in the pack. But going against him, not once but multiple times, they were all dead per our law. I watched as he had them uncuffed, and free to try to escape. He killed Jennifer almost instantly. Tabitha was too scared to run, and Michael took off like the hounds were after him. He made it a thousand feet before Aaron caught him, and tore his throat out. Aaron stalked back towards us in wolf form with his head tilted, looking at Tabitha. I am sorry. I was your girlfriend. Please, just give me a break, I will leave and never come back. I swear Tabitha said to him. Aaron phased back and walked up to her completely naked and said, I wish I could, but everyone was warned the first day Reagan arrived, what the penalty would be for reporting to anyone that Reagan was here. You called Alpha Cole. You put all of our lives in danger the moment you did that. You knew Michael had to tell me, he was part of my unit, and I had issued an Alpha command about it. You knew that I was going to take care of you and Jennifer the next morning. So you decided to try to hurt Reagan one last time before you were put to death. I will tell you now, that if Alpha Cole manages to figure it out, and shows up at my pack, I will kill every member of your family, before Alpha Cole and his men make it onto my pack lands. Hearing the threat against her family the blood drained from her face. 
she knew he was serious. He was right to worry. Cole would kill a number of people to try to get me. Aaron reached out and snapped Tabitha's neck, and she fell to the ground. Let this be a lesson for all of you. Reagan is not to be touched by any of you. I paid for her to be here. She belongs to me. Clive is her protector and is now authorized to kill anyone who is perceived as a threat or danger to her from now on. Do not report her, forget she is here, because I promise you all, making that call to report her location will cost you your life too Aaron said and then phased back into his large black wolf and ran back towards the pack house. Clive helped me back to the pack house. I took a long bath and thought about it. He and Clive had supported and protected me, much more than I expected. I will do my best to provide them with the pups they so desperately wanted until my sentence here is completed. End of flashback Chapter 96 Raven's POV A little over the 10-year mark at Blackadder I have a love-hate relationship with our minibus. It was a necessity now, but Goddess knows how much I miss driving my SUV. The only upside to the minibus is that all of us can travel together, as a family because there are 15 seats in it, and frankly we need them now. Justin got his wish, as his prayers were answered for more children. The goddess decided to bless us with two more babies, twins, a boy and a girl. I am done now with having babies, I have already warned Justin to please stop praying for any more children. I reminded him that we will get more babies when our children grow up and give them to us. He was disappointed as he loves all of our children, and just wanted a few more. I just reminded him that we could just keep practicing to make them, only with me taking precautions to not get pregnant again. He was fine with that suggestion and was absolutely fine with all the practicing that I wanted to do. Our youngest children, Julie and James were four and a half now. They were twins too, and both Brandon and Justin were so happy when they found out that we were having twins again. Julie was Justin's baby and was so similar to him in so many ways. She had his easy-going temperament and attitude, everything rolled off of her, but she had none of his features. She looked exactly like me. It made both Brandon and Justin both dote on her from the moment she was born. My dad thought she hung the moon, as he had missed seeing me growing up, and felt like this was the goddess giving him a chance at getting to see how I looked as a child back then. I am working hard to keep her from being spoiled, as it could go there quickly because she has everyone wrapped around her finger. It took her longer to start talking because all she had to do was point and either her siblings or one of her fathers were rushing off to go get it for her. We all have to work hard to make sure that all the children know that they are loved. No one is more valued than the next, and I cannot imagine my life without any of them. Stella calls her pint-sized referring to her as my miniature version. Everyone else calls her Jules, as that was the nickname that Justin came up with one day, and it stuck. Justin had said, she is more precious to me than Jules, and he decided the nickname was perfect for her. Everyone agreed, and the name had been stuck ever since. Her brother James is my little sweetheart. He has Brandon's dark brown hair and green eyes, and he is just a cuddle bear. I guess knowing that these were the last of our children, I cherished the time with them even more than I normally did. It took me years to come to grips with the knowledge that we might not get out of this with no deaths on our side. I prefer to think that the goddess herself stepped in to warn us, to prevent us from not being able to protect ourselves. That she did that to help save her descendants. At just ten years into this whole thing, we are a very strong, and very protected pack. Brandon and Justin have spent the last five years continuing to train the children. Actually all of the children in our pack, and going over to Dad's pack to help them train as well. That is where we were going today. All of the children were excited about it, as my dad and Carter had taken what we had done, and enhanced upon the idea. Adding to it, 
and making their course into two full courses, for their children to train on. They also duplicated it for the adults as well, for them to get stronger and have fun doing it. That is where we are going today, Carter was having a birthday party for his oldest son, Lucas. He is turning 10 today, and all of the children are so excited about getting to go and visit and have a party. They have added a few things to their obstacle course, and all of the older kids were chomping at the bit to go there and try it out. Our boys were already making bets on who will do the best on the course. Jax was very confident and had already claimed that he would complete it first. How can you say that when you know that Lucas lives there, and probably uses it daily? Dex asked him. Jax shrugged and said, I just think I can do it quickly before looking back down at his tablet as he watched a video of some new moves in a video that Justin had sent him. Jax had always been confident, but he doesn't brag about himself. He knows that all we expect from him is for him to try his best in whatever he attempts. We do not have to get onto him, he is a machine when training. He is focused, takes instruction, and is very watchful for an opening while he is sparring with someone else. I sometimes worry that he is too serious about training, but he plays very well with his younger brothers and is so protective of his sisters. I couldn't have picked out a better heir to the pack. He gets the best of both worlds. He is calmer than Brandon is and I know that is all of Justin's work with him. Justin has taught Jax how to stay calm in tough situations, to be able to read the room and to think before he speaks. But I know that to his core, he is this way because of the moon goddess. He is going to be such a great alpha. He is effortless in knowing what is important, and what can wait, even at ten years old. I realized now, the value of Justin, the goddess knew. She knew what we needed before we did. Even Brandon will tell you how invaluable he thinks Justin is to our family. I glanced around from my spot on the side of the minibus. All of our oldest children are back there on the last row of four seats. The next row was two seats on one side of the aisle, with Justin in the lone seat across from them. Sasha and Emerson are side by side reading books and occasionally stopping to read out a funny paragraph to each other. I am glad that they too enjoyed reading, just like me. The boys are all on their tablets in the last row, and they get along so well. Jax always gets on first, and the twins are next to him, and Dex is sitting on the other end. Justin is in the lone seat in front of Dex, just in case of an emergency. We worry about the children, so he sits there in case someone tries to come in the back door of the minibus when we are stopped at a light or something. The next row was the youngest Jules, and James, with me sitting in the lone chair across the aisle from them. We have two drivers that are always with us in the front two seats. They are both warriors, and one of them is always on the lookout for any problems, while the other drives. Brandon is in the front row on his laptop, working. As the alpha, he is always working so hard for us. The kids' extra clothes are packed and laying in a duffel bag lying on the floor behind the driver. That way they can shower and change after the course. I packed our extra clothes in that bag too, as I knew that we were competitive enough to want to run their adult course while we were there. The second duffel bag had extra shoes for us all in there. Justin likes the boys to be able to sit together, and he is close enough to be able to get the back door open, if Jax can't, in case of emergency. The guys are always thinking of situations where we could be attacked. It was why Brandon likes to sit right there at the sliding door, so if we get stopped he will be the first thing they encounter when the door opens. Brandon, Justin, the Warriors, and I are all armed. We always are when we leave pack grounds. We are taking no chances at all on getting ambushed. We all carry the same caliber, and type of weapon, a .45. That way the extra magazines under the passenger seat can be used by us all. 
All of our children knew how to reload the magazine, so if needed, the older boys can get us reloaded quickly as they stayed down. That is another thing that is happening today. The three oldest, are getting their first real training with guns today. We had said that we were going to let them wait until they were ten years old to do it, and both Lucas and Jax were ten. It was just going to be them, but Justin and Brandon both feel like at nine and a half, if Liam and Chase wanted to participate today, they are going to let them. The oldest twins are very mature and do very well with instruction. Plus all of our oldest have been with us out on our range, and already have knowledge of the guns, and most importantly, gun safety. I just feel bad because Dex is nine now, and I know that he will be so jealous of them getting to participate in it. It will also allow Giovanni to train as well as he is over nine years old. As he is just a month younger than Liam and Chase, so we will see when we get there. I remember when I was growing up how I didn't get to participate in anything, even our birthday parties. It was a hard pill to swallow watching out my window as everyone celebrated Reagan's birth, but not mine. I still remember how that made me feel. Even at 28 years old, I can still feel the anger, frustration and sadness that I was just not enough to be valued back then. It was all a lie. I know that my life would have been completely different if Graham and Cassandra had just done what they should have done in the first place. Return me to my father. There was no point in keeping me, other than a big F you to my dad. Everything would have been different if they had but I really could not imagine my life being different than how it has been for the last 10 years. I am blissfully happy now. I have great mates and great pups. I love them all, and I know without a doubt that I would gladly sign up for all of it, all over again, for it to turn out this way. I know that Justin felt my sadness and he reaches up and rubs my arm, as I am sitting right in front of him. We are in optimal seating to stop anyone from getting to the children. They would have a fight on their hands to even try it. I am very protective of my babies, and I will fight anyone who wants to hurt them to death. Brandon turned as he had felt it too, and turned to reach back and hold my hand and asked, Are you okay? I nodded to him, and Justin pulled his arm back when Brandon did. The ride to Blood Walker was quick. I did love how these seats were large and could even support all the boys when they get older on these trips. Jax looks like he is 12 years old, just based on his physical size and his maturity. His innocent face prevented him from seeming like he was that old. The minibus served a great purpose though, it was higher so with walking on the aisle, you had 74 of headroom. That was good for me and the children. But since that was only 6'2", Justin, Brandon, and the two warriors had to bend over if they had to walk down the aisle. Brandon liked how strong it was with the strong construction, and Justin liked the bucket seats. I picked the color black, just like my SUV, and had the windows darkly tinted so no one knew who was inside the minibus. I wanted to protect the children as best I could. The only downside to the minibus was I felt like we looked like we were about to go out on tour as a singing family in it. I joked about it, but with eight children now, there was no other way around it. I refused for us to buy an RV or something that large to travel with, as it would be hard to outrun anyone in it. They are cumbersome and heavy, and even though they do serve a purpose, we all agreed that this minibus was the route to go on it. I looked around at all my blessings, I really enjoy being a mother so much. I cannot imagine my life without them. They are all different from each other, in temperament, humor, and abilities. I am glad that the guys really don't see any of them as mine or yours, they see them as ours. I couldn't have asked for more from either one of them. They both love and take care of the children. They both train them, teach them, and encourage them. They have special one-on-one -on -one time with them in a daddy day, where they let the child pick out something special to do. 
it has really worked out well. They love getting a special time alone with their dad for the day. Both Brandon and Justin both have a little vase, and all eight of the children wrote their names down on a slip of paper. Once they have picked all the names from inside the vase, then they put all the names back in it to draw again and start over again. We do this each month, the children understand that even though Brandon is super busy, he still makes time for them, because they are important to him. They guys also make sure that I know that I am important to them too. We have finally gotten it all figured out in the last five years. We know that things can only get better from here, and I am still hoping that we can discover where the threat will be coming from before they attack us. Dad, Brandon, Justin, and former Beta Timothy are all still working on it every single week. One day someone will come forward, I know it. The reward is now sitting at a million dollars to whoever can let us know where they are hiding. That is a great deal of money for someone. It is only a matter of time before we find out who has been hiding them. The council is furious, as they know, just as well as we do, that they are not hiding in the human world. They have done some drops on some of the packs that they suspected they were in with no success at finding them so far. They have a total of five packs on a list of possibilities. All because of how their pack is set up and because of the level of difficulty in actually entering these packs with no notice. The council is supposed to be granted immediate access, and yet all five of the packs have made them wait at the gate. Sometimes up to ten minutes to enter. Each of these packs has suddenly been able to grow its pack land, with no explanation of how they got the funds to do it. Plus three of the packs, have buildings that had been built on their land. Buildings that do not fit in with the rest of the landscape, at least not with the pack house. All with no explanation of who lives in the house, and no tour of the house. My father and council member Emerson both believe that it could be narrowed down to these three packs. My father wanted to send some spies in, but with how these packs are, it could be a death sentence for the warrior sent to go there especially if they get recognized as being a member of, or having been sent in as a spy by Blood Walker. Dad and council member Emerson think that it would be best to just keep an eye out for now. We will focus on these three packs in particular. We still have time, and I am sure that council member Emerson is correct. Those nice homes being built in the middle of log cabins are like a beacon for our attention. Graham and Cassandra would not want to live without what they considered to be creature comforts. I look out the window as we near Blood Walker and pray again that this will be over soon. I just cannot lose any of my precious pups in this war. A war that as far as I am concerned should never be happening. There is something twisted in their head for them to consider women to be secondary, and not important. The fact that they would willingly wipe out other species, for no reason, other than thinking that they are more important than the other species is crazy. Why they would be singling us out. Out of all of the other packs lets me know that Graham, Regan, and Silas all have a hand in this. I know that Graham and Regan hate me, but for them to want to hurt me, for something that I never had any control of is also crazy. Graham started this whole thing. I carried no blame for any of it it was always them attacking me, the whole time. I wonder just how crazy you have to be to do something like that. To carry irrational anger at someone that was an innocent victim themselves? All because Reagan wanted what the goddess gave to me, instead of being happy with who the goddess gave to her. Clearly, Graham and Reagan have gotten worse in their delusional vendetta against me, I do not look forward to seeing either one of them again. Chapter 97 Raven's POV We arrived at Blood Walker and pulled up to the pack house. All of the children wanted out at the same time, and this was the second reason why we sit where we do. I stopped them from running out, letting the two youngest out, and Brandon helping them down, before the girls, came out. 
Justin keeps the oldest in place until the girls are clear and then stepped out of the way while the boys all rush out like usual. They are hugging everyone and spoke excitedly with their cousins who were out here waiting on them. How did you know we were about to arrive? I asked Olivia as I hugged her. Justin texted us about ten minutes ago and told us when you were going to arrive. So we all hurried out to see you Olivia replied with a smile as she hugged the boys as they came to her to give her a hug, after greeting their cousins. Stella and Truett had been behind us in their SUV, with their six children, as they were coming to the birthday party too. Blaine was now ten, Andrew was almost nine and a half, and Aiden was almost nine years old now. They shot off to go greet Timothy and Amanda. They were tired of being cooped up in the SUV, so they ran over to join the group of boys at the foot of the pack house stairs. Wynne was eight now, and her younger sister Orla had just turned seven, walked up to give their hugs to their grandparents. They then headed to talk to my girls who were excitedly talking about the birthday party and of course getting to run the course against the boys. They are competitive, and the boys had better not count them out as Stella and I were fierce fighters too. It would be a mistake to do it. Truett had talked Stella into giving him one more baby, and he was about a month younger than our babies. She got pregnant right before I found out that I was so our last pregnancy was together. Truett Alexander was almost a month younger than my babies were, and he and James were best friends. I can tell that Truett has a crush on Jules. He was always with her and James, and he was so cute always wanting to help her. He had been doing this since he was two, so no one really noticed it except me and Stella. It was so cute to us, and we both hoped that it meant that they were going to grow up and be mates. I see Brandon and Justin watching Alex as he walks between Jules and James, and holds Jules' hand as they go back down the pack house stairs. Stella and I watch as they both turn to look at Truett at the same time. Truett was watching the pups as well and he shrugged and said, What can I say, he has my charm. Which caused a low growl from both Brandon and Justin. Stella and I couldn't help but laugh out, as they are already being overprotective while they are still so little. Alex is only a little over four years old, and so is Jules. The twins are about to be exactly four and a half. They could still end up as mates, but Brandon and Justin's opinions didn't factor into that. That would be the goddess will on that. They need to remember that both Stella and I were someone's daughters too. The men were going to have to get over it, we had over thirteen and a half years to find out if they were indeed mates. A short time later the party is in full swing and the children were having a blast. Joshua's kids were all out and lined up to run the circuit too. His son Joshua Griffin was nine and a half and was very good friends with Lucas. They were both bragging about having gotten to run the course already several times and telling our boys that they were going to beat them on it. I had watched Jax and Co which is what I teasingly call our four oldest boys, walk the perimeter of both courses thirty minutes ago. I noticed that Brandon and Justin watched them too, and instead of going to give them help watched as they walked both of the courses, and then made comments. We were proud that they all had their strengths, and at each challenge, they spoke to the others to pass on the best way to get past it. I know that my boys took it as a personal challenge to get through the course within a reasonable time frame. They have always had a friendly competition with their cousins and friends here. I know that the older they get, the more competitive they will get. Both Lucas and Jax are going to take over their packs one day. They are both strong, and both from Alpha parents. But I will say that I think Jax is stronger, and it isn't because he is my son. It is because, since day one, he has been the absolute best baby I have ever seen in my life. I believe that he is blessed by the goddess, and as a direct descendant from the moon goddess herself, he is naturally stronger. The goddess told me that Cassandra was one of her own descendants. If Cassandra had stayed with my dad, 
as she was bonded to be, I believe that Blood Walker would have become the very strongest pack around just from that fact alone. The kids had all lined up into two groups, with the children under five lined up to run the easier, an older course. All of our children had run it, but our youngest had only been on it a few times. Both courses have challenges on them that may be harder than they can handle. Justin and Brandon are both giving our youngest tips on how to traverse the course. Jules and James are so excited to run it, and Alex is standing there listening as well. I am interested in seeing him run it. I am quite sure that he will not be running off with James to get through it, I know that he is going to stay with Jules. He isn't old enough to know why he likes her, but Stella grinned at me, they both have strong wolves inside them even as pups, and not having them yet. We both think that is why they are drawn to each other. She thinks that he can already sense that Jules is his mate. I know that Stella and I would love to be in-laws basically with each other. We have hope that one day we might be, but it isn't up to us. The whistle blows and all of the children take off. Stella and I are running with the big kids and Brandon and Justin are staying with the little ones. I would have loved to watch the little ones, but there had been a lot of trash talk coming from the Blood Walker children. We were there to make sure that they don't take it too far. We want them to have fun, and challenge themselves. We don't want anyone to get hurt doing it. We stay close enough to hear what is being said, but not right on top of them. I heard a noise behind me, and see Carter and Joshua racing us on the course. I guess they thought that we were challenging them. I looked at Stella and without saying anything we both sped up. We will challenge them on the adult course next, but I am okay with doing it here too. Sometimes the guys get cocky, and they need us to let some of the inflated air out of their heads. Looks like it is time to do it again and I smiled as I hit the wood wall hard with my right foot and pushed my body up to climb quickly over it. Both are coarse, and theirs had some military elements to them, as they were good to help train the kids. They needed to work on teamwork and figuring things out for themselves. Even with receiving instruction from us, the children still need to use what they have been instructed, and their own knowledge to get past each one. Sometimes they come up to one, and when faced with it being right there in their face, and is much bigger than expected, they can forget what they need to do. There are about twelve kids ahead of us, and Stella had pushed herself just as hard as I did. We were up and over the fence before Carter and Joshua could get to it. They were much heavier than we were, and there wasn't a wall on the adult course. After about thirty seconds of them trying to get over it, they both gave up and went around it. I saw them as Stella and I caught up with the back of the pack of children. Since it was wide enough for two to go across at the same time, we ended up passing half of the children on it as we crossed the monkey bars. We never looked back, we knew Joshua and Carter would be coming in behind us, as we were fast. We may be mothers but we trained at least five days a week ourselves. We took our training seriously and we wanted to be examples for our children. Ones that they can look up to and know that we train too, and want them to, as well. I don't expect them to do anything that I wasn't willing to do myself. We were now behind our sons, my four sons, and her three, and we were running with her youngest son Aiden. He grinned up at her with pride in his eyes as he knew that we were well behind all the children when the race started. We always let them get over the first two obstacles before we even start the course. He was proud because we had all passed all the Blood Walker children to get here. We stayed right behind the kids as we finished the course and Carter, Joshua and their sons came in with them, right behind us. Carter gave me a grin, and I already knew what was about to come. Bet you won't beat me on the adult course, Raven, he said with a smirk, and Joshua nodded in agreement. Yeah, we run that course twice a day sometimes, so I know they can't beat us on it. What is the bet, 
Joshua. Stella asked without even looking at me. She knew I was in to do it with her. This time we won't be holding back as we did with our kids. We were just out there to keep the kids from getting too competitive. Clearly, we know where their competitiveness comes from now. They got mad that we beat them on their own kitty course, and think we can't run the adult course against them. It will be our pleasure to prove them wrong. You want to go ahead and run it first, just to see how it goes? Carter asked, and I heard a laugh from behind him, and it was Justin and Brandon. No, we don't, we can all run it together, Justin said. Brandon nodded in agreement. We won't need a head start either guys. We should be able to manage the course Brandon said before Carter or Joshua could try to tease us again. I see the glint in their eyes, with the guys participating, they have forgotten about me and Stella now. They no longer think of us as competition anymore. It is Alpha against Alpha, and Beta against Beta now, as Justin used to be a Beta. He just accepted the Delta position to be there with me, he is more qualified to be Beta than Truett is, even with his Beta-owned bloodline. Stella looks at me, and I already know what she is thinking, and give her a nod. We are going to wipe the course with all of these big bad men. How can they be so dismissive of us? It wasn't Brandon and Justin, it was again Carter and Joshua whose cocky attitudes and lack of humility showed us both that they needed another crash course in it today. We are both glad to help them out with it, just like the last time. As anticipated our children were the first four across the finish line, with Jacks at the front of them. Stella and Truett's children were right behind them. I was very proud of my boys and our daughters that were eight and a half, were right behind us. They were faster through the course than Carter and Joshua were. Stella's daughters were right behind them, just ahead of Carter and Joshua. I looked over at Brandon and asked about the twins because Justin was speaking with his father. I wanted to know how our youngest children did on the course for the first time. Brandon glanced over my shoulder and I see them walking our way. Alex is still hand in hand with Jules. Stella grins at them, and I couldn't stop myself from grinning at them either. Our babies are so very cute together. James did very well, he came in with the first few that crossed the finish line, Brandon told me. This was the first time that he had attempted the course, and I could hear the pride in Brandon's voice at how well James had done. Jules had fallen down and skinned her knee. But Alex stopped to help her, so he got behind too. It would be harder to see this if they weren't so stinking cute together. He dotes on her as much as we do. You may be right, they may be mates. He is just as strong as James is, but he wouldn't leave her alone to run the circuit with James. He stayed with her the whole way and helped her navigate it. I don't know if she liked him taking care of her, or what but she really acted like she didn't know what to do with each new challenge. He talked her through each one. He was her biggest cheerleader on the course, even with her dads there to help. Justin was a little put out over it, but he agrees. He thinks that they are mates too. It would explain all of it. He told me that he had felt a pull towards you throughout the years, he was just too scared to act on it Brandon told me as he hugged me. Are you trying to butter me up with the hug so we don't embarrass you on the course? Because the gloves are off, my love. Stella and I are planning on coming in first on it I told him and gave him a quick kiss before dancing out of his arms. I would have it no other way, my love Brandon called back to me. The challenge is set. He won't be babying me on it either. He knows that I am capable of doing this with no help at all. I think Carter is confused as Simone doesn't train consistently, just every once in a while. She takes care of their pups and plans all the meetings that are scheduled in the venue that they built ten years ago. They have at least three big bookings each month, sometimes up to six, 
and that is a job within itself. Dad has made a lot of money by booking the venue out, and occasionally to humans if the price is good enough for him to do it. They work with local werewolf businesses for flowers, catering, invitations, and anything else you can think of, even liquor. Olivia helps her with the business too, but Dad's pack is strong, and only getting stronger with each passing year. He is not expecting an attack, but if one came, they would be prepared for it. He has more than 400 of his now 600 plus warriors, who were highly trained in weapons. The rest of them like a more hands on approach, and are hand to hand experts. We did the same at our pack, allowing the warriors to train the most on what they liked. We have several techniques as well and we picked a lot of the same ones. A lot of self defense techniques, Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and Krav Mega were the favorites of our men, as well as Dad's. Dad is not going to allow Olivia or Simone to fight if it comes to his pack. He already has a bunker built, and he is prepared for anything, but he believes as we do. That the war isn't coming to him, it is coming to us. Black Adder will be the target. I guess the reason for their coming will be found out when they do decide to show up. I will never allow my children to go out on a battlefield without me. I already told Angie, Brandon's mom, that she is in charge of the women and children because I will be out protecting my children, when the time comes. Or if you want to pay for more such audiobooks, you can send us a request in a private Facebook group, or join us on WhatsApp, a link is given in the video description. The rest of the audiobooks will be uploaded in the next episode. Join us on Patreon to listen to more unlimited audiobooks.